Dearly beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. We thank God for every opportunity that we are still blinking, we are still alive, and God is good. And so let us give thanks to the Lord by prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you that every moment you give us is precious. And so we pray that you bless us as we dive into your word, sharing and talking together and praying together and encouraging one another in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I welcome you again that we have continued to continue. We have continued in the word, the word, the word of God, because it gives us life. And I will never tire to mention that because that is why God created us and put us here. And we shall continue with our Bible, the word of God, written for our edification. Yes, we talk about energizement, we talk about encouragement, but also about edification to make us a kind of people that God wants us to be. You and I are created in God's image. And so this Bible is full of people also that are in God's image. And many of them did good. Many of them did contrary, but we learn lessons from them. And we have been talking about these biblical figures and we shall continue talking about them because they make up the word of God. And so the figures that we talk about this moment, one of the kind is called Hur. When I mentioned the name Hur, H-U-R, well, depending on how it is, but someone can pronounce it in any way, but this is the person that we're talking about. And he, we cannot mention about Hur without mentioning Aaron, because the two names go together. And so I just invite you to think about this biblical figure. It is one of the hidden ones, hidden figures in the Bible, hidden human beings, but they have lots of lessons that live for, live for us, you and me. And so this is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 17. The children of Israel are on the journey, like we read, we know the Bible tells us, and they are all going, and there are people that played a great role in their life, and we shall continue talking about them because they leave a lot of lessons for us. So chapter 17 of Exodus, and we shall read verses 8 following, and we shall pick our lessons from there. That's why we exist, and that's why I'm speaking to you. And before I speak to you, I speak to myself, because the message has to get an impact on me, so that actually when I'm speaking about it, it also impacts somebody. Could be you who is listening and watching, and anybody else that will hear a story. Now, in chapter 17, verse 8, the Bible says that then... Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And verse 11, the Bible says, Whenever Moses held his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever Moses lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. I just want to repeat verse 11, because that's where the message is also. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary. So they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands one on one side and the other on the other side. So his, hand, his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed 
Amalek and his people with a sword. Now we just, just read on verses 14 and 15 because there's something that I actually want to learn from there as well. That then the Lord said to Moses, write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sun. And verse 15, the Bible says, and Moses built an altar and called the name of it, the Lord is my banner, saying, a hand upon the throne of the Lord, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Pray the Lord, brethren, that actually this portion of scripture has something also it leaves for us. Of course, I could have heard people keep quoting, the Lord is my banner. You hear Jehovah Nissi, and this is very, very important message. But these persons, Aaron and Hur, are mentioned. But of interest now is the man Hur. Remember there was a battle. At Amalek, the people come, the children of Israel are on their way, and they're keeping fighting. These are some of the challenges that the Israelites faced. The wars along the way, the heat of the sun during the day and the cold at night. And on top of these natural ones, there are human ones like these Amalekites coming to attack the people of Israel. But then the Bible says, talks about the events, how they unfolded. And these also guide us through our spiritual lives. That was we travail as you move about in life, in our activities, there are challenges that we face in life. You and I must be having a story, a story to tell about the challenges that you go through in life. Some of them are family challenges. Some of them are work-related challenges. Some of them are, you know, even church-related challenges and, you know, many, many things that come our way. But these people, Moses, his assistants, his elder brother, Aaron, now they're mentioning now, Joshua mentioning Hur. Now all this actually teach us a great lesson. And so the Bible is saying that actually Moses was the leader. And many times in this portion that whenever his hand was up, his people led by Joshua, the commander of God, the Lord's army, was winning. This is very great. It leaves a great lesson lifting up hands in prayer and trust to God. But also, the time comes when Moses' hands grow weary, grow tired. And of course, okay, this shows us that how um, work can make us tired, can make us weary. You can work, doing God's work, but you wear out, you get tired. Moses' hands could not hold up, and yet, this was the good news for the people of Israel, for the soldiers of the arm of the Lord. Whenever his hands were up, this was um, success. This was victory. That they were triumphant whenever the hands were up. And yet, humanly speaking, someone gets tired. And so we pick a lesson here that in as much as we are doing God's work, sometimes getting tired, you know, humanly speaking, you wear out, but you need support. You need help. You need energizement. You need support indeed. And so this man who comes into picture that, you know, Moses was brought a stone and he sat on it and his hands had it to be held up. Of course, we have heard a lot about Joshua. We have heard a lot about Aaron, the brother to Moses. Actually, he was his elder brother. And so the Bible is talking about these uh, these events as they unfolded and this man who is mentioned and he had been mentioned uh, even earlier but more so ahead in chapter 24 that he was one of the leaders of the people of israel and in exodus chapter 24 verse 13 to 15 he was one of those that actually moses left in charge of the people when he went up the mountain to meet with god and so who was one of the leaders but not much talked about, not much known like the others are. And so we have lessons 
that we learn. I have learned a lot from these people and particularly this time with Hur, um, the man that helps support one of the hands of Moses. Of course, the other side was Aaron and he was on this side. And so I have already mentioned that actually even when we are doing the work, there is getting weary. There is weariness. There is getting tired indeed. And it is human indeed to get tired. But as we get tired, one lesson that we gather from this man in this journey to the promised land was that we must be supported. You need support. The people that do church work need to be supported. The people that do God's work must be supported, should be really. Because we are leaders, we have evangelists, we have pastors, we have, you know, assistants. We have in church setting, we have wardens, we have, uh, uh, you know, ushers, we have vajas. All those are, you know, positions in the church, but they are support positions. So I just thought that actually this is important, that when we are doing God's work in there, we need the hurs, hurs, these persons that will support, that even when we get tired, even when our hands get heavy, we get enabled to continue. We need somebody who will support you. So I applaud the men and women that God is using in church circles and everywhere to support church ministry, holding the hand of your church leader, of your pastor, of your bishop, of your name him, name her, that you support this work. So who helped Moses to accomplish his ministry? He inspired Moses to do his work, supporting the work. So you need to be inspired us in this work. We get tired, but we need somebody to inspire you. You need somebody to say a word that will energize you that will encourage you to lift your hand up and could be a word and sometimes also maybe financial support to the ministry people are going out for mission and you give resources and so this is very very important that actually there could be very many things that actually we learn from this particular point of supporting god's work the bible says that whenever moses hand was up the israelites were winning and whenever it went down the the enemy the Amalekites were winning. And you and I must be on the winning side. We're on the winning side. And therefore, our, the hands must be up. And these are hands of prayer. These are hands of meditation. These are hands of trust to God. And so we pray to God that he will raise men and women that will do her uh, position in our work. And so I got energized about this. I got, you know, encouraged to talk about Hur in the Bible. One of the least known people, but he did great work. And so we all need, another thing that actually we'll get here is we all need help from others. In as much as we must, you know, uh, uh, do the work, but we need help from others. Moses needed this support. Listen to me. He needed his hands to remain up. Two, he needed to settle down. You know, they brought a stone. The Bible said that they brought a stone for him and he sat on it. He sat on the stone in verse 12 of there. He said that the Bible said that they brought a stone, you know, they, and he sat on it. So he needed some people who will, who will organize, you know, you know, organize something, something for you. And therefore you do ministry. And so we all need that. And I want to appreciate God for the people that have given that time and to support, but also those that have given opportunity to be supported. That's very, very important. And so Hur remains a figure that is actually very, very critical, very, very important, that he did this work, but it is remembered. It is in his remembrance. And the only thing that he also did was, actually he had a son and then had a son. Now, one of the children of Hur was called Bezarel, and we shall have time to talk about Bezarel in his own right. But Bezalel became a great man in Israel. We shall talk about him at another episode. But now, 
what I'm trying to say is God can reward us. We do his work and he does ours. You have children and children have children. And you say that your generation is blessed. And so I am believing God that as we, as we do his work, he does ours. He increases our lineage. He increases our ancestors. He increases that our name will not be stopped. Pray the Lord that you are doing God's work. Pray the Lord that you are planning to do more for God. And so that actually this will be counted upon you as your blessings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so one other thing that actually we learn from Hur is that we must stay strong and bring success in the work of God. This is very important that in as much as we, we do the work and we get weary, we must stay strong. Strength is good. Physical strength, I mean, is good. In as much as we're talking about, we talk about spiritual strength, economic strength, name them, all those strengths. But this one of the physique is good. The reason why Moses' hand had to remain up and strength is very, very important. The reason why Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, says, stay strong in the Lord. So I urge everyone that we need to stay strong. Strength is good. We need to stay strong. And staying strong, the Bible in the other words is mentioned about stay steadfast in our work. Strength is good. And the reason why we pray against the sickness, the reason why we pray against hunger, because hunger drains our strength away. Sickness drains our strength away. And we also pray against discouragers. There are people who discourage others. And when they discourage you, your strength is withdrawn. The one that came out with the strength, the one that came out with the power, you find that actually because there are discouragers, you get derailed. The reason why we must stand, Nehemiah stood strong even when there were discouragers, the Sanballats and Tobias that were saying, oh, look, what, you are doing, what are you doing? You cannot manage to build, to rebuild the wall. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so this is very, very encouraging, my brothers and sisters. Very, very encouraging. When we read in Nehemiah chapter, you know, chapter 8, verse 10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I just want to leave that with you, that Hur and Aaron provided this, the strength that the hand of Moses remained up and there was victory on their side. And then to Paul also mentions, Paul also mentions in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, that the grace is sufficient, praise the Lord. That the grace is sufficient. And this is very important, that the grace of the Lord is sufficient. And I have dwelt a little bit more on the strength because you need it. You need to be strong. And actually, even in my hands, as I'm demonstrating like this, these hands need to be strong. These lips need to be strong. And for me to speak, my voice to come out, I need to be strong. Even you, to do something, you need to be strong. And so we pray for the strength from the Lord. God is continue giving us the strength to do his work. God continue giving us the strength to carry on. Moses had to carry on despite the weariness. And therefore he needed this support from this man. And this is very, very important. And Moses sang a song in uh, uh, this um, Exodus chapter 15. When he defeated, when the Lord opened the way, and he says that the Lord is my strength. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Yes, this is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And no wonder when he put the pillar, he said, the Lord is my banner. And so pray the Lord, brethren, that actually God will continue fighting for us. And the Lord is our strength and the Lord is our salvation. To the Amalekites, the Lord remained the strength of the Israelites. Moses' hand is being up. And so we need to be remain steady and very, very important. And one other thing that actually we get from Hur, the supporter, giving the strength to this um, uh, man of God who was doing greatly. We also need to do great things for our people and it will be remembered in our memory. You see, who does this and it is remembered of him in his memory. My desire in these figures is that we do something good that it will remember for us. It will be in our memory that we did something here on earth. 
May God bless you that actually as you do what you are doing, that will be recognized, it will stand out. And who this action, this act makes him stand out because he supported the hand of Moses. Will you do something to support the work of God and remain remembered? You remain, you know, your action remain stands, stands out and you'll be remembered for it. Now, one other thing is, friends, be mindful about those who work for the success of the institution or of the family, of whatever it is, behind the scenes. There are some people who are doing some work behind there or below there, whatever it is, and we need to remember them. They need to be remembered for the good that they are doing. Pray the Lord. And we may not be, all of us may not be at the forefront, the battlefield, you know. Joshua was down actually at the battlefield down there fighting. Hur could not go to the battlefield. Moses could not go to the battlefield. Aaron could not go to the battlefield. But this man took his position. You know, um, you know, this, it looked maybe at that time, at the moment, it looked insignificant, but he played his part. He seems not to be so much noticeable by holding. So you do your work. Even when recognition may not be coming your way. You know, there are people who do little things behind the scenes. You find something is said, but someone that has swept the floor, someone that has cleaned the floor, someone has set the machines for the church, someone has, you know, set the projector, someone. There are those people who do support work like that. And I want to encourage us that actually these men and women are very important that actually before we appear on the scene doing great things for us who are in the limelight, there are those that are actually working behind the scenes to see that work continues. And so we recognize you people that work are working behind the scenes. Yes, we recognize you. This whole is a recognition of everyone that is doing work that actually may not be at the forefront, may not be easily noticeable, but God knows you. God knows what you are doing. Behind the scenes, he recognizes that. And who is an example for us, friends. And so this is very, very important. So in church work, you can become an arm lifter. Pray the Lord that you become an arm lifter, that you support somebody, that you support the work of God. So who leaves us a huge, huge, huge lesson in our ministry that and as much as not all of us shall climb the pulpit, not, that not all of us will go to the street preaching, that not all of us will do, will go for pastoral ministry or will do anything that is noticeable. There are those that are actually behind scenes and they are doing great work supporting. So we all can't serve in the same position. We all can't serve the Moses position. We all can't serve the Joshua position. We all can't serve in the noticeable positions, but we need to take our positions. I am glad I am who I am. And you also need to be glad to be who you are. So that actually God will use you everywhere that you will be. Who is remembered for doing this? So in your position, serve for the glory of God. Serve faithfully. Never despise your contribution. I just imagine who never despise his contribution, merely holding the hand up. And may God bless those that are holding the, the, the hand of the ministry so that the ministry continues and so that the ministry is, is carried on. So who contributed what he could and now an appeal as I end is that contribute what you can in church work, in whatever position that you are. Never despise your little contribution. It will be remembered in your memory. We have heard of people that have served in the church, little things that I've done. We have seen people that have done, you know, little things there, 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 there. But at least there will be, there should be, there will be someone who will speak about your contribution. So I am purposed that I need to continue serving, doing the work of God in my own right, who stood on the other side, I don't know what was on the left, on the right, because okay, the other side was Aaron, but they were supporting the Moses, 
whose hands will bring victory to the people of Israel. And we are believing that God will give us victory, friends. That we have many challenges. We have many ills in society. We have many things actually that go wrong. But we pray that the Lord will deal with the Amalekites of our time. And the Amalekites of our time are numerous, are so many. But we desire and we pray that God will bring us success. At your family level, there could be your Amalekites. At your institution level, when you are working, if you are working wherever, we must we have our Amalekites. But God, raising up men and women who are like Moses, lifting up their hands. But also, God raising up men and women who will be supporting these hands up. That actually ministry must continue. God's work must continue. The journey must go on. The Israelites had to fight this way because... The journey to the promised land was waiting for them ahead. And yet in the middle here, there were Amalekites. And so you may be, you may be, they, they, they could be a barrier to your success. They may be a barrier to your end. But now pray to God that actually Moses will be there. The Hurs, this man will be there. The Aaron's will be there. So that actually you achieve your goal. May God, who started this good journey, remain with you and bless you and grant you the desires of your heart that you reach your destination. You reach your destiny someone supporting the work and someone being supported to do the work. May God bless you and watch over you. And I pray that actually God's hand of might or power be with you. And as you put up yours to pray, yes, there should be someone who will support them and the ministry must continue. And so that actually we attain success, we attain victory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.